Alright guys, so today's video is going to be slightly different as this is a build we filmed early on last year. So this is before we had all the camera equipment, mics and any idea of what we were doing. So here it is, Copart has just dropped the car off outside for us and this is what we get for 10 grand. All of so we'll have a quick walk around and see what type of damage it's got. Who's been shafted? You like your man? <laughs> <laughs> I was touched that there, there but hey. Should be right. So right out the gate, we can already tell this is going to need a new bed and rear bumper. Be dense in the dirt, though. So let's get the truck in the yard and we'll go from there. So the next one is I got dropped off the other day. We never had any cameras with us, so if they think the first time, we really shit in it. Right, so where she is, is a 2019 Ford Ranger Wild Track, and this is what 10 grand gets you. It's got 38,000 miles on the clock. It's a Cat S, which means it's got structural damage. So under the bonnet, it's got the 3.2 five-cylinder diesel engine, which doesn't sound terrible for the diesel engine. We estimate it's gonna cost four or five grand to put it right. The pre-accident value is 25. Now, hopefully they'll be a nice little tidy profit in this for us. So moving on to the interior. It's quite a nice interior, apart from the glass that's everywhere from the rear window going through in the crash. But for an added bonus, the airbags haven't gone off and have even come with some free bird said. Bed shit on the seat. Bed's been living here. I mean, we are missing a window. What's wet as well? Ah, dead. Right. Jump pack. So the battery's dead, so we're going to have to give it a quick jump start so we can get it in the workshop and start stripping stuff down to see how bad the damage is, and then we can order some parts. <laughs> So you may have noticed when we took it off the Copart truck, the rear right wheel was pushed forward quite a bit. Now when Liam brought it in the workshop, you could notice it quite a lot when driving it. So we're going to get it in, get the bed off and see if we need a new axle or not. Right, before we crack on with today's video, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to OBD11 for sponsoring this episode. And our Transformotion viewers can get an extra 10% off when they use TVR at checkout. So here it is, the OBD11 device. It's a great little way to save yourself some money and diagnose your car from home without sending it into a garage. So with this being compatible with VAG and BMW Group, it's a great little device to own. And it also supports Toyota and Lexus and anything 2008 onwards. So officially, this only works on cars 2008 and newer. But we've got a 2007 Honda Civic Type R outside and we're going to see if it works on that. So here it is, our 2007 Honda Civic Type R FN2. We bought it and it's got an engine management light on. So let's plug OBD11 in and we'll see what the fault is. Oh, sh me back. <laughs> so once you've plugged your OBD reader into its OBD port, turn the ignition on and click connect. So it's connected and we can see it's found the Honda we plugged it into. So we'll just click tap scan and it'll scan through the engine codes. So it's come up with one fault found. Click on that. Engine fault. Knock sensor, one circuit malfunction. Bank one, single sensor. So you can click on it and you can click G and it'll take you to Google and it'll explain what the fault is. So PO325 is basically bank one knock sensor. So now that we've got a bit of an insight into what the problem is, we can look into fixing it. So we're going to try and clear this fault code and see if it goes away. It probably won't because we haven't fixed it, so it'll probably come back on, but we'll see what happens. So that fault's cleared, but it'll probably come back on after the test drive. So for now, we'll just see what happens with it. So an engine management light is a problem that most people are going to come across with their cars. So by owning your own OBD11 device, it gives you the chance to check it out before taking it to a garage. So I just want to say a massive thank you to OBD11 for sponsoring today's video. And don't forget you can use code TVR at checkout for 10% off. Or well, you can click the link in the description below or scan the QR code on screen. So to remove the bed, we're going to start by taking the tailgate off and then we're going to brush it out to remove all the glass. Yeah, glass. As you know, we're really safety conscious. Ah. Then we're going to remove the spoiler, the bed liner, to get access to the wires. I'm going to rip the bumper off and then we're going to take the bed bolts out and then we'll get a better view of what's actually damaged and where we need to go from there. So the last thing to do before we take this bed off is to get this fuel filler neck out of the way. 
To do that, we've got to drill out rivets on the wheel arch liners and undo a couple of stashed off bolts and it'll come free, but it was a bit of a nightmare. That was a bit of a pain in the ass. And that out of there, it's all off now though. Should just lift off. It's now time to get the bed off the back of this truck. To do this, we asked a couple of the lads to give us a hand, so there was one of us on each corner. But with this being very early days in our YouTube career, we forgot to aim the camera at what we were doing, so you're not going to see the bed come off this, but we did take it off. There's glass absolutely frigging everywhere. And I keep putting my hand in it. So it's getting done now. So now that the bed's off, we've noticed there's glass all over the chassis. Now if you've ever had a smashed window, you'll know the bits get everywhere and it takes multiple hoovers before you can get rid of it all. So now that the bed's off, we've got a much clearer view of the damage. The good news is we've got away with the axle, so we don't have to replace that. And it turns out it's just the spring locators that have gone. So we're going to order two new springs and two new shocks as one of them's dented too. But for now, we're just going to loosen the U-bolts up and try and knock the axle back so it's not crabbing in and out the garage. To do this, we're going to have to remove the spare wheel, but it turns out there's a lock on it and we've not got the key. But we're not going to let a silly little lock stop us. This wheel's got a scuff on, so I'm thinking if we use this one, yeah, but I can't get rid of it. It's got a lock on it and we don't have the key. There's only that little bit of corrosion. You can't just cut it out. Yeah, I can cut it, like I'm just trying to get it off like this. And there she is. One spare wheel lock. I a lot of people. So getting this spare wheel lock off wasn't that tricky. Turns out when the bed's off, you can get access to the mountain bolt. And we simply undone that and it dropped off. So after knocking it with the hammer, we've got it about 80% there and that'll drive in and out a lot better. We know it's not a proper fix but it'll do until the new springs come. So now we've got the spare wheel off the Ranger, we're going to drag it outside and give it a bit of a wash. So we're going to move on to the front of the truck now and start stripping the bumper off as it's cracked in a good few places. It looks like when the car's been hit from behind, it's been shunted into the car in front, which has ruined the bumper a little bit. So we'll get the front end pulled off and we'll assess the damage properly. So after getting this front end on the floor and investigating the damage, we are pretty confident that we'll be able to sort this one. So we're going to stitch it together with plastic welding staples as it's not in a visible place. That'll be pretty jobby. I know some people will say, oh, you should have got a new bolt there, but you try and find one. You try and find one <laughs> on the price yeah. of a brand new one. We're going to add some plastic welding staples, which basically looks like a normal staple with squiggly lines in, and you heat them up red hot and melt them into the plastic. So, a little bit of plastic welding, doesn't it, anyone? So we also reckon that this Ranger front end moustache looking trim can be repaired too. So once all these staples are in and the two pieces are bonded back together nice and strong, we're going to go back over the front of it and melt some plastic back into this bumper, just to fill any voids we've created with the staple gun. And then we'll sand it down, we'll get some filler on it and we'll sand that back too so it's ready for paint. So the springs and shocks have just arrived, so we're going to get on with getting the axle 100% complete. We're going to start by using the wire wheel on the nuts and we're going to spray them with WD, back the nuts off and take off the U-bolts. Then we're going to buzz the front and rear bolts out and then we can remove the spring. Now that it's off you can clearly see that the locating bolts have snapped. And this is why we've replaced the spring, not the axle forward, snap sheared this bolt. You sort of see where all the leaves come loose, shekels moved everything, so it'll never been safe. Alright. Not that much to the axle or nothing. So I think as soon as we put the new spring on, we'll be laughing. So let's have a look at these new springs. Oh, new second hand. There's a new one. As you can see, that bolt intact. 
but there's a rubber missing from there, but I can just slide on up the old leaf. Alright, I'll get these two unwrapped and then get back to you. A few moments later. Alright, so I've got the spring mounted, but that little locator in the middle is not meeting the hole. And I've tried pulling on it and it just springs back. So what I'm going to do is put a ratchet strap around that. I'll just back my van up, so we can strap off that and just gently ease the wheel back. So this is what I've rigged up. Take a towing strap, just double it around the wheel so it doesn't damage the wheel at all. Run that along there to a ratchet strap and hooked it to my van. And just put a bit of tension on it. Right, are we any closer? A little bit more. Right guys, so here we're trying to get the locator to drop into the hole. So as you can see, I'm still about a half inch off, so I'm going to put a bit more tension on the strap and hopefully it'll just drop right in. So I'll pull out a bit more, should drop in. Check that out. Right, so we're sort of there. Let's be pry by now. Let's see if this drops in. There we go, hear that? That's located. So now that that's located, all I've got to do is put the U-bolts back on and tighten them all back up. Then I can crack on with the shocks. Now them U-bolts are a nightmare. Because they stretch out past the holes. And you've got to get a pliers. You need three hands really, but... Struggled on that there. That's the next spring. That's tight, they're tight. Then two are tight. Should put the shock on now. That's it. So all you've got to do is slide it on the stud on the chassis, put a nut on and a nut and bolt on the bottom. It's as simple as that. That should be it. the axle all straight again. New shocks, second hand springs. Nearly ready to go around to the painters. So before we send this truck off a painter, we're just going to try and pull a few of these dents out to make life easier for the painter. So the way this tool works is you weld it to the required area of where you want to pull the dent out. You slide the hammer on the shaft of the dent puller until you're happy with the dent being pulled out. And then we can go over it with some filler and get it in primer ready for the painter. Right guys, so now that we've got the truck pretty much ready for painting, the new bed's just turned up and we're going to get that put on the back of the truck so we can send the whole thing round to the painter in one go. Right guys, so it's been a few days and she's finally back from paint, so we're going to take it up to Peak District and give you the big final reveal. So it's been quite a cool build this to be honest, we've quite enjoyed it and it's been quite quick as well. And we're just going to give you a quick price breakdown of how much it cost and where we're up to with it now. Right, so the price breakdown on the parts is the rear bed cost us 450 quid, the tailgate was 300, the rear bumper was 300, the side steps cost us 200, the offside rear light cost us 75, the grill cost us 75, the rear shocks were 125, the rear window cost us 180, the spray paint was 1250 quid, the rear springs were 240, the battery was 163 as that kept dying. The stickers were 36, the service was 100, MLT 45, two tyres cost us 180 quid, the lower grille was 60 quid, floor mats were 58, mud flaps were 28, the arch liners were 49, the odd bits and bobs were 128 and the bumper brackets were £40.22, which gives us a total of £4,210, the labour was 1300 quid which gives us a grand total of 15,666 quid. We estimated that it'd be worth about 19 grand, but Matt found us a buyer who gave us just under 17 grand, which is still in profit, so we decided to let it go so we could move on to the next build. Somebody would be getting a cheap car there because that's only done 30 something thousand miles. It's the 3.2, not the 2.2, so it's got the better engine, and it's 15 grand plus VAT, so quite a cheap truck really because it's a, it's a 2019 as well. And the reg is PIMP. <laughs> like Fiddy, yeah. So we did say today's video was gonna be a bit different. So as you can see, we weren't that good back in the day at filming. And we're probably still not the best now, but we are getting there. We're a lot better. Yeah, we're, we're a lot, lot better. better. If you've enjoyed the footage that you did manage to see, don't forget to leave us a like, to subscribe, and leave us a comment. You can also follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks for watching. See you next time.